Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be solving a problem on lead code. The question is assign cookies. So the question says, assume you're an awesome parent and want to give your children some cookies, but you should give each child at most one cookie. Each child I has a greed factor of G of I, which is the minimum size of a cookie that the child will be content with. And a cookie J has a size S of J. If S of J is greater than or equal to G of I, we can assign the cookie J to the child I and the child I will be content. Your goal is to maximize the number of your content children and output the maximum number. So we're given an example of one, two, three, G is equal to one, two, three, and S is equal to one and one. So what G is over here is basically the greed factor of the children. So let's say we have three children. The first child may have a greed factor of one. The second child may have a greed factor of two and third child may have a greed factor of three. And S of I is the amount of cookies you can give each child so that their greed can be, you know, maximized. Basically, if I give one cookie to this guy, to the first child, and so basically, let's say we have child one, he has a greed factor of one, and I give him the very first cookie. So the maximum capacity of cookies he can want is one. And if I give him one cookie, his greed will be satisfied. So, you know, you can increment the count by one over here. But in this case, if I have another child two, his greed factor is two, which means he needs two cookies to get, you know, fulfilled or satisfied. If if I, I already give one cookie to that kid, uh, first kid, and I, I only have one more cookie left. So I can't give him this one cookie because my, the greed factor of that kid is more than the amount of cookies he can get in this case, which is basically if S of J is greater than G of I, the child I will be content with it. So the second child will not be content because he'll only get one cookie in this case. So yeah, and same for the third case as well. The third child will have a greed factor of three, which is more than the second kid basically. So we can't give him just one cookie and satisfy his greed. So he will also not get any cookies. So in this case, we can only have the output as one because only we're just satisfying one child with one cookie, right? And let's say one more example over here we have g is equal to one and two so we have let's we have two children who are greed factors of one and whose greed, greed factor is two and we have three cookies right and we have three cookies let's say we have three bags in which we have one cookie on uh, one bag we have two cookies and one bag we have three cookies right the very first child will get his greed satisfied by one cookie if we give him one cookie and the second child will also get his greed satisfied if we give him either of the two cookies either of the two bags of cookies, right? So we'll have a greed fact, we'll have an output of two because all both the children are satisfied in this case. So um, the very first approach that, you know, that might come in your head uh, might be that the brute force approach, um, you know, just take all the kids, all the G kids over here and loop over them and, you know, just compare each, you know, kid with this one cookie bag, you know, they're getting. And basically just increment the count if it's equal or not and just get the answer from it. But that's a very bad solution. And so an optimal way to solve this would be, you know, just sorting at first, I guess. You can sort both the arrays from ascending to descending. So if I just sort G and S over here, what I'll get is what you're seeing on the screen right now only. So you'll get the same format if we sort it in ascending order. And when we sort it in ascending order, okay, okay, yeah. And also why we're sorting this is because the question does not state that whether it's going to be sorted or not. So we'll just assume that it won't be sorted. And mostly because I have solved this question, it isn't sorted. So you do need to sort the arrays in order to get the answer in this question. So we'll sort both G and S in ascending order over here. So when we sort this in ascending order, um, Let's write it over here. So we have G over here. When sorted, it'll give you one, two, and three. And we have S over here. When sorted, it'll give you one and one. Okay. As after we sort it, what we'll do is we use a two pointer approach. What we'll do in a two pointer approach, we keep one pointer over here. We'll keep one pointer over here at this guy. And we'll keep one pointer over here at the bag of cookies we have. Okay. 
And what we do in this ascending order is we just compare the first kid and see if his greed is getting fulfilled by the first bag of cookies or not. If you think about it logically, that's the whole scenario, right? Because if the first kid is not getting satisfied by the first bag of cookies, right, then all the other cookie bags are not going to satisfy his greed also, right? Because in this case, let's say we have one over here, right? This is one child who has a bag of cookie of one, and who has a greed factor of one, and we have a pointer at one uh, at the very first kid, and we have the uh, second pointer, J, at the very first bag of cookies, which has a capacity of one as well, okay? In this case, the kid's greed is getting fulfilled, right? When the greed does get fulfilled, what we do is we'll increment both I and J. When both of I and J are getting incremented, we'll compare again. When we compare again, we'll see that the second kid who has a greed capacity of two does not get his greed fulfilled by the second bag of cookies, this J bag of cookies, right? Because the amount of cookies in the J bag is less than his greed factor. So it's not getting it satisfied. And you can also see that if it doesn't get satisfied for two, it's not gonna get satisfied for three and four and whatever else would be ahead of it. So when that is done, what we'll do is we'll just, you know, increment J in this case and see if, you know, there are more bag of cookies ahead of it. But in this case, there are no bag of cookies. So, you know, you can't increment J. But let's take a different example. Let's say we have G is equal to 10, 9, 8, 7. And S is equal to 5, 6, 7, and 8. Right. Now, when we sort G in this case, we'll get 7, 8, 9, and 10. And in this case, we get 5, 6, 7, and 8. Right. Now, if we keep a pointer over here, right, I over here and J over here, right? Firstly, what we'll do is what we're going to do is we're going to compare if S of I Firstly, what we're going to do is we're going to compare if, you know, G of I is less than or equal to S of J. Right. So what is G of I in my case? G of I is zero. Right? Are both of our cases, I and J, initially are zero, right? Both I and J are zero. What we'll do is we'll compare now. Now is G of I, which is seven and S of J, right? If S of J greater than G of I, then no, it's not greater. If it's not greater, what we'll do is we'll just increment J, okay? Now J will be over here above six and we'll increment J over here. Right, now we compare again G of I and S of J. In this case, again, it's not greater. We'll increment J over here. Right? Now J is two. Now when we compare G and G of I and S of J, now both of them are equal. So what we'll do is we'll increment both of them. When both of them get incremented, this becomes three and this becomes one. And again, when we do check it again, both of them are say both of them are equal so we will increment both of them and we'll just you know increment this this will become four and this will become two now we'll run the whole loop until you know either i or j either get you know, are greater than their you know respective arrays and if either one of them you know goes beyond the certain limit of their array we'll just stop the uh, code and we'll just return i because as you see over here I will be what the answer is, or you can just maintain a counter just to, you know, make it more easier for you. But in the end, you can also just return I because as you just saw, I will just keep maintain what the answer would be. Okay. So this is how, what the code is guys. Now let's just code it out. Okay. So this, let's just do this here. Okay. Make our I equal to zero, our J equal to zero. Okay. Now we want to run these loops. Firstly, we need to sort both the arrays. Okay. Let's just sort them in ascending order. Let's do a G dot sort and an S dot sort. Okay. Now we have I and J equal to zero. Now let's just do a while loop while I is less than length of G and or sorry, or J is less than length of S. What we'll do is we'll check if G of I 
if g of i is is less than or equal to s of j if that's the case then we'll just increment i and j both and if not we'll just increment j once and then we'll just in the end return i okay let's run the code and let's run the code Okay, so we're getting a runtime error over here. So this has to be an and. Let's run it again. Yeah, we're getting the output. Um, the and function over here. We're using and keyword over here just because, you know, either if both of them are inside their respective length of their arrays, that's when that's when you need to run the code. If either one gets out, if any one of them, you know, goes beyond the length of their respective arrays, we need to stop the code that right there and then. Right. Okay. Let's just submit this. Yeah. And it gets submitted. So yeah, guys, this is how you solve this problem. And the last thing, just before you guys go the time complexity of the code is O of max of n log n. n log n comma m login so this is the time complexity of the code guys so yeah if you like the video please do like share and subscribe and do check out more dsa related lead code content on my channel and let me know in the comments what kind of video what kind of problems you'd want me to solve next and also do check out my podcast yeah guys that's all for today and yeah